step one, denaturation. We're gonna have a mixture containing the DNA sample, or sequence of interest, some free nucleotides, we need the primers, and thermostable DNA polymerase enzymes. So in step one, this mixture is heated to 95 degrees C so that the hydrogen bonds holding the DNA double helix together are broken, resulting in our two polynucleotide chains being the templates for the formation of our new DNA strands. Step two is primer annealing. And in this step, the sample must be cooled down. So the sample is cooled to 55 degrees C. This is important as it allows the hydrogen bonding of the primers so they can anneal, i.e. primers will complementary base pair to the start of the DNA sequence we want to copy. Finally, we have step three, polymerization. And now our sample is heated up again, this time to 72 degrees C, which just so happens to be the optimal temperature for those heat tolerant DNA polymerase enzymes from the thermophilic bacteria, so they can do their job, which is of course to polymerize a new strand of DNA by catalyzing the condensation reactions required to form a new sugar phosphate backbone from the free floating nucleotides. Again, you've got to remember semi-conservative replication. So by the end of this first cycle, our original DNA sample has been copied. So now we have two. So now the PCR machine repeats those three steps. And after our second cycle, we'll have four copies of DNA. Cycle three will equal eight copies of DNA. Cycle four, 16 copies. Cycle five, 32. Cycle six, 64. Cycle seven, 128. You get the idea. And after each cycle, Cycle, the amount of DNA has doubled. So after a few hours of this, our original sample has been amplified. We now have millions of copies of that DNA sequence we are interested in.